for anyone who has had a guinea pig before, you know bonding can be a pretty stressful thing. You have a slight chance of just the bonding not going well and um, it can cause issues. Today's video, I just want to share a little bit about that process in case you're trying to get another guinea pig for your group or you're getting two completely different guinea pigs all together. Um, hopefully this video kind of shares a little bit more about that. So because I had great experience with Reese and Snickers, Snickers um, was a senior guinea pig of mine who just recently passed away. However, Snickers and Reese, they bonded instantly and I was so surprised by that. Reese really, really wanted to be near Snickers and they just happened to bond really, really well. I think because Snickers was older than Reese, Reese just naturally um, grabbed towards Snickers because Reese was a little bit younger. I think Reese had been alone for quite some time and I think that just made the whole introduction a little bit easier than some. However, when Snickers passed away five months later, it really left Reese in a position where he was not only alone but he was sad and he just needed another companion to have with him. And sure enough, I went to the same rescue that I adopted Reese from. He's a big boy but he's younger. I think he's one years old and when I was holding him in the rescue, I just couldn't help but feel something with him and amongst the other guinea pigs that were literally just being <laughs> given to me to hold I felt the most um, with Hershey so I decided to adopt Hershey and I brought him home and everything and um, it was quite an interesting experience. Also when you do adopt um, just please make sure you look over the guinea pig as well. Um, I did not do this with Hershey and I kind of wish I had. Um, there wasn't anything serious going on however when I came home that day I noticed that his paw was slightly swollen and he was not putting as much pressure on it so I was going back and forth with the rescue. They weren't able to really do anything about it. His medical records showed that nothing was wrong, even though that was a few months ago. So I've just been taking care of him myself and the expenses have been coming out of my own pocket. But had I had noticed the paw beforehand, I could have asked more questions in person. And in the end though, it actually ended up being where Hershey just ended up stubbing his toe. <laughs> um, he's kind of clumsy, so Within a few days, the inflammation just went down and he's fine now. I also want to say if you are a parent who's thinking about adopting a guinea pig for your children, when it comes to the introduction phase, do not let your children interfere. And I try to say that as friendly as possible, but guinea pigs need to do their own thing because of the hierarchy that is established between them. They are animals after all. They stick together, they work in groups, and it's important for them to keep that hierarchy established. As a parent, just make sure you're supervising your guinea pigs and making sure that nothing is going wrong, they're both safe, and everyone can kind of monitor the situation from a distance. And if you need to step in, you can step in. Finally, when it comes to the introduction, if you're really not comfortable about the two guinea pigs meeting each other, um, first things first, you can give them time next to each other so in different cages um, and just the bars right between them. That way it'll give them time to smell each other, to talk to each other, and to be close to each other without having to worry about them fighting. I didn't do this because I was comfortable being there to supervise them and uh, handling any situations or any fights that came about. But again, if you're not comfortable doing it that way, you can always just have them separated for a few days and see how it works and then introduce them. Also, please take your time when it comes to introducing two guinea pigs or three guinea pigs or even more. Each guinea pig is going to be very, very different. I had the wonderful experience of Reese and Snickers bonding with, within an hour of meeting each other and I did not have to worry about them at all. However, with Reese and Hershey though now, it took me at least over 12 hours. So again, if it comes to the point where there is blood drawn between two guinea pigs or more, you definitely want to stop the interactions altogether. Give your guinea pig some care. Make sure that there's no serious wounds. And if there is some serious wounds, you definitely want to take them to the vet and get them checked out. So yeah, now that I have established some context for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely let me know what has worked for you when it comes to bonding your guinea pigs. And stay tuned for part two um, of this video. So thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, so this is the progress so far. We're probably about like half an hour in, I think. Um, there's still a lot of challenging going on, especially from Reese, but I think he's settled down for the most part. He's letting Hershey eat. Um, he still tries to do all of that. Um, <laughs> they're downloading each other's DNA.
And finally, after an hour or so, they have come to an agreement that they can tolerate each other. They're lying near each other. They're yawning. Oh my goodness, I feel so relieved. So relieved. Update, it's the next day. During the nighttime, I did separate the cage in the middle just because I wasn't really confident that they could do well together during the nighttime. I felt like that was the right thing to do, so I just put one of their grids in the middle and I used a bunch of these paper clips to kind of keep it closed together. In the morning, however, uh, Reese um, did manage to break through it and they were going at it, like the whole chattering, humping, and all that good stuff. So, um, I did decide to remove this because I wanted them to kind of go back to trying to get acquainted with each other. However, it seems like overnight Hershey has gained some confidence and now he's doing a lot more challenging to Reese. And um, he does not let Reese try to hump him like before. And um, he also, Hershey is also starting to lunge back at Reese because Reese seems to be the one who's constantly trying to, I think, challenge Hershey. I don't want to say that I'm starting to panic that they may not be able to bond because the last thing that I want to try is clean their cage again and then I want to do what's called a bonding bath. Um, I've heard great things about it. It's basically when um, you put two guinea pigs or even more guinea pigs in a bath. If you have, you know, if you're introducing like one guinea pig to a group, you put all of them in the bath together. Um, and essentially the water would help wash away their own scents and make them both smell. And then after that, they're gonna go into a clean, fresh cage. And even though this cage is like literally just cleaned, I'm gonna clean it again. And also I am thinking about expanding their cage. Um, right now they have a two by four. I wanna make it a two by five. I do have the parts. I just need to get more blankets and towels. Can you guys smell each other? Can't see each other though. Yeah. But you smell each other. Uh-huh. All you guys can do is talk, so be nice to each other. Say nice things. Jesus, you guys are too cute to be doing this crap. No, well, sorry, you guys can't get along. No, you can't be with each other. I'm gonna have to do the old fashioned way and bathe you. Oh, you see. Oh, God, you're a good boy. Are you a good boy, we see? Are you a good boy, Hoshi? You go for the sheet. Oh, look at the nose. Yeah. Oh, look at the tongue. All right, so I have a bath ready. It's about an inch of water, kind of, I think. Um, and the piggies are here. You guys ready? It's gonna be scary. It's gonna be scary. There we go. Let me stand out of the light. They have never been in a bath. Reese has never been in a bath, so this is their first time. <laughs> what is it like, guys? Oh. So I'm not really sure how long to leave him in here for, but we'll see how it goes. This is probably the closest they have been to each other without fighting. And so I actually put them in the bathtub together, like at the same time, and I think that kind of helps. Or not, I don't know. I probably should have just did this at the start. Yeah, hi baby.
right, now they're Roman free. I still want to give them some time to kind of get acquainted to each other before putting them back in the cage. Plus, it's warmer in the bathroom than it is in the office, so. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to have the blow dryer on them. Okay, well honestly, I don't know if the bath time worked because they did chat their teeth um, once I let them roam the bathroom floor. I don't know um, if it's a success or not. I am really, really hoping that it is and I'm just gonna continue monitoring them just to make sure everything goes well. For now, everything is being completely washed. So, so far, um, they still chat their teeth, but they're able to eat side by side, which they were not able to do before because one or the other would chase the other off. So, I want to say we're making some progress. <laughs> They're still doing the lunges as you guys just saw and um, it's not as intense as it was this morning. This morning it was pretty intense. They got into a big fight. I think it was like tornadoing and everything and um, that's why I decided to do the bath and um, so far they're keeping their distance on each side of the cage which obviously I, I do need to expand it and I really do hope to do that really soon. Um, but. Yeah, um, anytime Reese tries to get closer to him, they just, her, she just doesn't accept it. And so that's what Reese will do. He'll go to that corner and then he'll try to eat and then her, she will notice Reese and he'll just be like, what are you doing here? I don't want you here, this is my space. And he'll try to claim it. So her, she seems to has taken the role of being more in, as a leader and he'll just, as you can see, um, he'll just kind of, you know, push Reese away and, um, it's, it's interesting because Reese is older than Hershey. Hershey, again, is like anywhere from one to two, and it was confirmed that Reese is three years old. So it's really interesting to see how this is playing out, but I just I just hope that the fights, you know, they calm down a little bit and at some point, I mean, obviously it's still really early and I can't really expect them to kind of like click immediately. Also, I just saw this, um, don't know, that probably happened during the lunge, but it's a little piece of hair from Hershey. <sighs> don't know if it flew off of him when he lunged or if this little guy did it, but that's definitely not a good sign. I finally decided to put some hay in the middle of the cage. And then this happened. Yeah, they were chattering their teeth and, um, you know, huffing at each other. 
I don't know, maybe it's just gonna come and go because one minute it's fine and then the next it's like this. So, I don't know. We're still gonna see, it's only day two. Alright, so I decided that it was time to add in some cage accessories, so I added two of these little um, cuddle sacks, and then I put hay on each side, and I did try to face the cuddle sacks in opposite directions, so that one is facing this way, and that one is facing that way, just in case like they could get tired of each other. Um, and so I also added the cover there, and I do plan on cutting some cardboard up and putting a cover right over this one just so that they can feel a little bit more secure and safe. Um, I wanna say it's been going really, really well. Um, the lunges have died down and there hasn't been any blood drawn or any kind of nips or, or scratches or cuts on either of them. Fortunately, um, I think this guy, he's doing all the lunges, although I did see him do one, but there, it doesn't seem like they're actually like nipping, nipping or biting to the point where it, you know, it breaks the skin. They do this a lot. They go up to each other and then um, they shake their butts and then they walk it off and then they sniff each other's butts and everything. But then after a while of doing that, they'll go back to eating hay. And since I've added the cuddle sacks into the cage and all the other new accessories, like the divider there, the uh, fleece divider, um, it has kind of stirred them up into becoming more territorial. Um, but I wanna say it seems like the whole episodes of them like sizing each other up seem like they're dying down a lot. Um, this guy is getting a lot more comfortable drinking from the water bottle before we see him was not allowing him to drink from the water bottle or allowing him to eat. Um, so now they're both able to eat um, without getting all stirred up. Definitely making sure that they have two of everything so like two of these little cardboards filled with hay, um, two little piles of hay on each side, two cuddle sacks, and then I also have two um, big bags of hay and also two water bottles, um, just to make it, sh just so that they can feel like they have something of their own that they can, you know, have rather than trying to fight for everything. And it seems like it's really, really helping. The, the buddy bath, I have heard mixed reviews on it that, you know, it's a myth, it doesn't work. And then also it does work for me it definitely helped um, die down the tension between them and it helped um, them overall get over I think a barrier that the two of them had between each other it didn't stop the lunges though but it did make it a little bit easier for them to come to some kind of agreement after all the lunges and whatnot I'm thinking about expanding the cage tonight. The thing is I need to either go to Walmart to get some fleece or order it, depending on if they have it in stock. But um, this is going to make the cage two by five instead of two by four as it is right now. And um, I thought that maybe just them having more space because you know I do believe that they have like alpha <laughs> energies and that's probably why it's taking so long for them to kind of get on with it. So I was thinking about just expanding the cage and if I did, I would move their cage to where my desk is, which is against um, to my right. And um, there's more space there and I feel like they would appreciate just having more space, even though their cage already takes up a ton of space. Um, it is what it is.
Obviously, I'm not gonna give him all of this, but. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Hmm, what's this? So they are making so much progress. It is almost eight o'clock. I gave them a bath at one o'clock or so, and they have significantly improved their relationship with each other. So I'm making progress. It's taken a little bit long, um, but I'd rather it take long than not happen at all. <laughs> so I have a lot of updates as you can see the cage is different and I spent a good chunk of my morning doing this on my own where I expanded it um, I actually messed up cutting on the chloroplast so I had improvised and I used a bunch of boxes just to kind of stabilize it because for some reason um, it wasn't stable this whole section right here is new um, and also I added that divider right there to kind of stable lies the the top part which i plan on fixing at some point in the future but so far this is like the concept that i was going for now this little cool thing here i'm not sure if they're going to use it i put some hay here but i thought it would be like a little cool area where they could like jump onto it and lie down yeah so far it looks amazing i've also added back in these like little wooden houses um i made sure there was an entry and an exit um, and I also added a window on the side. And then there's also one under there, which Reese, the little brown guy over there, really, really likes. And um, I also made this. I had tons of cardboard left, so I had some string, and I just kind of added it on top of there um, just so that they can kind of play around with it. But yeah, so far, this is what I have. It's not perfect, but I'm really, really happy about it. I really want to keep playing around with it to see what I like and what the guinea pigs like. And he's already over there. He likes it. Yeah, so if they get tired of each other, they can just run to the other end and just have their space. And so far, it has been working. I have not, um, I've only seen this guy lunge once and it was because Reese just would not leave him alone. Um, so Reese is learning and Hershey is learning. They're both learning each other's quirks and ins and outs. So that really makes me happy because the other day it was really, really tough. Like it took six to seven hours for them to just get over the lunging aspect of it. But I do think now they seem to be okay. They both lie down next to each other, but sometimes they'll, you know, now that the cage is bigger, Reese or Hershey will, you know, lie wherever it is in their cage. Okay, so I actually had to separate them because Hershey, this uh, little dark guy right here, um, he seemed like he was getting on Hershey's ner uh, Hershey. <laughs> he seemed like he was getting on Reese's nerve and um, wouldn't leave him alone. And I was just worried that they were gonna start fighting again. Sorry, my AC is on, but 
Essentially, I was just worried that Hershey was going to get another cut on his face. Um, he has like a minor cut on the edge of his lip and then one inside. They're very, very small, but I noticed it when I was examining him. And I just don't want anything like that to happen again. And so I separated them for a little bit and this is like what happens. They both go up to the uh, divider and um, they're just trying to figure out, okay, well, what is this thing here? Like, why is this here? I can't get to you, especially Reese. I think Hershey is at the point where he's still going through the, I forgot the fa the name of it, but it's basically like a rush of male hormones. Um, and I just think he's, I feel like he's constantly trying to one up Reese and um, Reese just kind of puts up with it. Okay, so I heard some noise and I looked over and I saw this little guy on top of his little hidey hut, which by the way, is pretty unstable and it's missing a leg. Right now it is propped up by one of the clothespins that I have on the cage, like that one right there that you can see. Um, hi Bubba. Yeah, hello. Hi, I'm recording. You come to say hi? Yeah, you like to be in attention, huh? Yeah. Oh, are you going to popcorn for mama? You going to popcorn? <laughs> but anyways, I don't know how he got up there. Um, that's not what I was intending to happen. Like that's, I built a loft area for them to go up to have access to that rack. But I guess he had other plans in mind because he didn't want to do that. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll have to keep training him and teaching him to use this ramp because I don't want that to cave in, but I know his heavy butt is going to make it cave in. It's just a matter of time. Be nice, guys. I don't want any fighting. Uh, I honestly hate it when they do this. I really do. Like, I'm really wondering who's starting this. There we go. And that is what Reese has started to do, is whenever he wants to get away from him, he just jumps up there and... <laughs> Hershey still hasn't figured it out that that's where he goes, because then this little guy is like running around the cage trying to figure out where his brother went. Um, and he can't figure it out even though he sees and smells him going up there.